So Thanksgiving dinner will hopefully be delish, but it is also a stark reminder of painful prices as the president pushes Bidenomics. Since he took office, prices have spiked for many Thanksgiving essentials. Turkey up more than 31 percent. Bread, potatoes, pie, cakes and cookies all seeing major price jumps as well. Critics say voters are not too happy. They keep trying to reinforce this idea that Bidenomics is working for the average American when the average American keeps telling pollsters and this administration that, in fact, it is not. The people who are getting crushed the most are the middle class, the working class, and the poor. Those are the same groups that the Democrats and Joe Biden profess to champion the most, and yet they're the ones who are absolutely getting squeezed, whether it's on Thanksgiving or any other day. House Republican Conference Chair Elise Stefanik with a new op-ed titled Bidenflation is unwelcome guest at our Thanksgiving table. The Wall Street Journal Ed Board writes this, hundreds of millions of Americans this week will celebrate a happy, grateful, politics-free holiday. Family members and fam family memories rather and touch football are still free, but they may well remember their holiday grocery bill when they vote next year. No one should claim to be surprised if they do. Power panel Lauren Wright, Princeton University political scientist, and Dan Kinnanen, a former senior advisor for Hillary Clinton, uh, join me now. Um, all right, uh, Dan, let me start with you. Um, this Thanksgiving, people are really uh, feeling the pain of the holidays, which is unfortunate, but this time more than the Biden's administration from the inception is probably an all-time high. Uh, this president has sort of been in denial about that, it seems, by talking about or downplaying inflation. But as you can see across the board, everything is up. That's inflation. Sure. And I think when I look at this situation, Julie, I'm reminded of 2011 when I worked for President Obama and having a, a, a time when the economy was also not doing as much for workers as they wanted. And there was a long tail of people, people feeling comfortable and confident with the direction of the, of the country. But what the Obama campaign understood a year out from the election was it was less about the top line number, Romney versus Obama. Romney was winning back then a year, a year out and winning by plus 10 in the economy. It was about understanding you needed to connect with voters on those issues. The Biden campaign, I don't think they're in denial. I think they know they have to connect in that way over the next year. And they do have a good story to tell. For 21 straight months, inflation has come down while unemployment rate has been below 4%. And now, since about July, uh, wages are rising faster than inflation, in part because of great progress made on manufacturing jobs, on, on negotiating union contracts with the support of the president, the UAW, which is helping put more dollars in workers' yeah. pockets. That will take time to sink in, but I think they're doing the right thing and they're focusing in the right ways, just like President Obama did in 2011. Lauren, oftentimes when we talk about Bidenomics, we talk about inflation. The Democrats do like to talk about wage increases. But the problem is that inflation supersedes wage increases. So these wage increases are really nothing. People are either falling flat or they're still in the red. So it's just, you, 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 I don't know. I mean, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. It seems that this administration wants to try to sugarcoat this, but there's no sugarcoating the prices at the pump, in the grocery stores. And while they say inflation's down, every time I go to buy something, I go in my Amazon account and I look at what I paid for it last year and it's up. I mean, every Every single item is up from a year ago. So how do you say inflation's down when the prices are consistently moving north? It's a very hard message to sell. And look, I don't blame them. Any presidential administration is going to try to defend their, their policies. The problem with the Biden administration is their policies caused short-term inflation. They injected trillions into the economy when Biden was elected eight times the size of the New Deal. And Clinton and Obama era economists all said this will cause inflation. It's one of the most tried and true findings of economics research in this area. And then Biden had to defend those policies, even though Americans hold presidents to the account for economic policies, they vote retrospectively in this area. And only 14 percent of Americans think they're better off under Biden. At this time during the Trump administration, that was 35 percent. Mm -hmm. So there really is quite a gap there between perception and reality. The messaging is really tough. It's going to be interesting how voters do vote. And I'm talking all Americans, every color creed and liberals are apparently losing it because the Spanish language outlet Univision uh, dared to give time to former president and 2024 Republican frontrunner Donald Trump. Uh, here's a sample of the outrage. 
Univision has become Magavision. So as an artist, I'm going to have to boycott. There was very little pushback. Mm -hmm. This is what I would say to television, to Univision viewers. Use your voice. Use your remote controls. Univision, watch out. Yeah, watch we're out. watching you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, are they kidding? <laughs> First of all, the last time that a news network interviewed a president or a former president uh, was one of the broadcast networks. They interviewed Biden. The, I, I mean, do you not remember that interview? I mean, it was absolutely a kiss butt fest, and there were no, there was no pushback, there were no questions, there was giggling, and oh, you're so great, fawning over the president, but you know. Whoopi Goldberg wasn't doing this to them. Uh, the company CEO, by the way, defended the interview. He says it won't be deterred by uh, partisan interests. Here's one media analyst's take on the left's anger. What you're seeing right now is a major meltdown, mostly uh, on the left. The reason that there is this meltdown going on is because Univision, as we know, is a reliable uh, left-wing depository of Democrat talking points. They're all up in arms. They want that continued air supremacy on Univision. The Wall Street Journal editorial board weighing in. What really alarms Democrats is the fear that they may lose a Spanish-speaking press. For years, Mr. Biden's party has taken Hispanic voters for granted, but their loyalty is being stretched as the left abandons traditional cultural values and Bidenomics hurts the middle class. New polling is backing that up. President Biden's approval is at a record low of 38 percent among Hispanic voters. Trump has gained 13 points with Hispanics over the last three years. Dan, what Democrats, I believe, take advantage of, okay, and, and they take for granted, is that they think because you're a minority in this country, because you're in the middle class, because you're not among the 1%, you're automatically going to vote Democrat. That is simply not the case anymore, especially when it comes to Hispanics and the immigration problem in this country, immigration being one of the top button issues that voters will be voting for. They are voting against Democrats because Democrats do nothing about protecting our border and allowing more illegal immigrants to come in. And that is something that legal Hispanics loathe. No one's a monolith. White voters aren't a monolith. Black voters aren't a monolith. Hispanic voters aren't a monolith. And, and Democrats or Republicans both should not take those groups for granted in that way, as you say, Julie. But I want to make two points about the Univision debate here. I have no problem whatsoever with Donald Trump being interviewed by Univision. No problem with the interview, except I think it's fair to critique them if it's a softball interview, just as you might critique another network for a softball interview of Joe Nicole Biden. Nicole Wallace That's over at game. NBC. Do you remember that interview about four months ago? Sure. And I. I think those are fair to critique those points. I don't but remember point one person in the problem. media, though, ever coming out and saying, can you believe that? We're watching you, NBC. Not one. Well, here's the issue, though. It's not just the interview. The second point I wanted to make is that what they did at the same time is they canceled ads the Biden campaign placed around the time of the interview, Dem political ads they wanted to put on the network were they canceled. And there's a question right. there then, Julie. Were those ads canceled because of the Trump okay. campaign pressuring them on that point? I am getting a hard rap. I am out of time, but I thank you both for coming on and making this a uh, fair and balanced segment. Uh, thank you both. Lauren Wright, Dan Kinnanen, thank you both, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern, or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.